Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. It's that time of the week where we take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. So first up this week was a kind of a surprise new release from CRKT. This is the new stylus from Ken Onion. It comes in about 70 bucks right now. And honestly, I was kind of surprised to see this drop uh, for a couple reasons. Um, biggest reason, probably you guys are already thinking it is the CEO flipper already exists uh, for a little less money than this too, about 40 bucks. Uh, but this is a more premium take on the knife. We actually had um, a couple years ago, one of Ken's first uh, prototypes for the stylus, for his custom stylus here in the building. And I thought it was phenomenal, but it, never thought we'd see the uh, a production version from CRKT because of that other, uh, that other CEO in the lineup. But I'm really glad it's here um, because it's a really cool design. Blade 12C27, so you got a bit of an, uh, an upgrade, at least in my opinion, from the, uh, the OS8 of the $40 version. Comes in just over three inches as well with that uh, full flat grind. So kind of similar dimensions as well. Handles upgraded here to aluminum rather than injection molded. You've got some nice ribbing going on here. It's going to give you plenty of traction to hold on to this otherwise pretty narrow handle. Got a deep carry pocket clip there. And the other thing, apart from the steel and the, uh, the materials differences that differentiates this from that uh, the CEO is we have the new assisted opening mechanism in CRKT's lineup that they introduced this year, which as far as assisted openings go is actually quite nice on the close. You don't have to fight it too much. It still kicks it open quite nicely, but watch again as I close it. There's a bit of a bias towards close. It actually starts to suck it in there near the end, which is pretty nice. Apart from that, blade itself completely buried in the handle on that front side. You see maybe a little bit of the jimping, but then you do have the flipper tab. And one of the nice kind of luxury level features on here as well is the way they've done this aluminum backspacer. They've actually had to mill out a channel in the center of it where the, uh, the blade is going to come nestle in. So they could have gone with something a lot more, uh, a lot more simple, a lot cheaper, but they wanted to keep kind of the lines of that original custom stylus. And I'm really glad they did. And they're still paying a lot of attention to the pocket clips on their knives as well. It is uh, not reversible. It's right side tip up only, but they want to make sure it's eminently usable. It's not going to snag or anything. So the steel or the, uh, the clip itself is buried in a small milled out section of the, uh, of the aluminum. So it sits flush and the screw heads are also flush. So it's going to be nice and easy. Overall, it just feels like a really nice upgrade. The action is really nice and the materials are even better. All right, next up, uh, we've got some good affordable knives this week. New entries into Ontario's Wraith series, which was the, um, we had the Ice Wraith originally, which was completely clear, so you could see all the internal mechanisms. Well, they've come out with some colored versions now. Um, there's a smoky gray, a red, and this nice blue. This makes this the Glacier Wraith right here. You get those nice colors, but you still get the translucent qualities. You can see the way they've handled the spring here for the back part of the back lock. And it's just a nice little EDC shape too, and very lightweight, only about one and a half ounces. The blade is about 2.6 inches. It's this nice drop point with a hint of recurve, and you've got a 4116 stainless, dual thumb studs, ambidextrous capable lockback, and the pocket clip on here is reversible as well. It's a single screw, but it's nestled in quite nicely and you can switch that over the whole uh, the whole kind of hardware reverses over for the other side carry just really cool doesn't take up a lot of space in your pocket feels good in the hand it's going to cut nicely and it's going to look pretty cool when you take it out as well all right next up we've got a limited edition buck for 2020 uh, this is not one of the more affordable knives today uh, this is the 898 impact auto coming in at about 230 uh, right now. Yes, 230. Made in America, you've got S35 VN steel. You can see here we've got the limited edition marking there on the back. Carbon fiber, standard twill type of pattern, and copper accents all around. Looking quite nice, I must say. This is an auto, so you've got the safety switch. It's going to work to prevent the button from being released either in the open or the closed position. So you can lock it in that closed position if you like, and then slide it down. You got that nice or nice, I almost said assisted opening action, that nice automatic action to open and a fairly deep carry pocket clip here kind of wrapped around and following the lines of the handle itself. 
Now, it's cool to see what they've done with this particular limited edition. Most of the impacts out there have, have a much more down-to-earth or, or salt-of-the-earth type of vibe to it rather than this kind of gentlemanly vibe that you get here. So it's cool to see kind of that different side of the personality of this knife, but like I said, limited edition for this year, so don't wait too long if you want one. All right, back to some more affordable knives. We've got the new Cold Steel Double Safe Hunters, the newest versions of these knives. And these guys come in at a very reasonable $34 right now. For that, you've got a three and a half inch clip point blade, very, uh, coming right after buck, very classic folding hunter inspired here, especially with that clip point shape going on. We do have more modern amenities though than the, uh, the classic buck 110. You've got a reversible thumb stud here, so you can open it either side. You've got the pocket clip as well, single side in this case, and it gets the name double safe because in addition to a standard lockback, this is not Cold Steel's triad lock, you also have a secondary safety switch here, which when slid forward is going to prevent that lockback from being released. Ostensibly, this is so you can lock that into place for even more peace of mind when you've got it in the standard open position. But for me, I think it even comes into play a little more importantly on the closed position. And this is not so much if you're carrying it in your pocket, but if you happen to have it in a bag or pack or something like that, you can slide that forward. You can pull that out a little bit, but it's not going to come open. So thrown anywhere, you're gonna have a lot, uh, a little more peace of mind than if you didn't have that. As far as feel in the hand, it's a thin handle and you've got a pretty high degree of, tr of uh, texture here actually. So I wouldn't say this is like a, a comfort monster, but it's not super, super aggressive. There's just a lot there if you are putting down like hours of cutting through stuff, you might wanna be wearing gloves uh, with this knife. In addition to the clip point, there's also a new drop point handled version that comes with a, uh, a red handle. That's the Tim Wells Slockmaster version. And there's also some other handle color options for the standard clip point blade as well. Now, if you do want an affordable folder with a comfortable handle, the Becker BK40 is finally here and they're, they turned out really good. Uh, in a way, I think this is kind of the, uh, the competitor to the Ontario Rat Model 1 that we've been waiting to come along for a while. Like as, as far as a value outdoor knife, uh, folding knife proposition, it's kind of, it's, it's done really well for itself over the years. So it's really awesome to see a challenger to that model with this excellently designed Becker knife. Blade itself is gonna be very similar actually to those rat models. And I should have grabbed one here to uh, show them side by side. I apologize for that. Uh, but it's about three and a half inches, OS 8 steel, high flat grind, and this nice clip point shape. Uh, Ethan actually told me he, what he saw when he created this shape was kind of his take on like the classic sod buster pocket knife. He wasn't trying to recreate it, but he was trying to channel kind of the utility vibes of that particular model. So blade length and materials, very similar to that Ontario, priced just a little bit more, but where you really reap benefits here are the handle handles themselves and the handle comfort like I was just talking about. You've got some nice swells and contours. This is essentially the same uh, outline as the Becker BK16 and 18, that kind of mid-sized tweener handle. So if you know how those feel, that kind of length, you know if those fit you, these are gonna fit you quite well. Not quite the same contour going on, but a very nice contour nonetheless. You've also got four position wire pocket clip, so you can carry it in uh, any, any position you like. Nice liner lock, standard opening here with dual thumb studs, and just standard washers here in the pivot. You actually get brass washers, which is a good upgrade, again, from that Ontario. And when you go to pop it open, you can really feel it as well. You're able to get a nice flick going. Just, man, I, I really like it. Some folks aren't too keen on like where it's made these days and I get that, but coming in at $40 for an affordable, potentially harder use outdoor knife, definitely, definitely a good thing to have on the market. All right, next up is a new neck knife from Kershaw. This is the brace coming in about $23. More good affordable stuff this week. Two inch drop point blade. You've got an HCR stainless steel with a hollow grind. Just a nice little utility shape here as well. Not uh, Nothing too fancy, but there are some, uh, some nice details and nice lines that keep it from being boring, that's for sure. We've got some GFN handle scale, scales, handle skills, that are bolted on here and gets about a two and a half finger grip, at least for my slightly larger than average hands. That's kind of, I can kind of get all three fingers on there if I'm trying. So just a little guy, just small utility, comes gonna come in really handy for those small cuts, whether it's around camp 
uh, as a backup knife or as a small uh, unobtrusive EDC fixed blade as well. Now it's standard sheath comes set up for neck carry. It's just injection molded. And what's nice is you can stick the knife in in either orientation. It's gonna accept it quite nicely. And it's gonna make a nice lightweight package around your neck. But with the whole patterns they've, they've given you here, you could easily convert this uh, with something like a tech lock for belt carry or an ulti clip or a Mummert titanium clip for pocket fixed blade carry. Just a lot of really good options. It is kind of funny to think about putting like a, one of those titanium pocket clips on here because they're like 20 bucks. So it's kind of like putting fancy rims on an old junker car. Not that this is a junky knife, but I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. Thomas certainly does over there. Well, I did spend about $1,000 painting my $2,000 car. <laughs> That's preventative maintenance though, so that's worth it. Um, but this is worth it too, even if you wanna put a, an expen a more expensive clip on there. I, I really do dig the shape. Simple materials, nice and humble, but it's definitely gonna get the job done. All right, next up is another new Kershaw. This is the Analyst Flipper, uh, coming in at $32. This is a speed safe equipped knife, so you've got that assisted opening action. Uh, and kind of similar specs to uh, a lot of their budget stuff in that you've got an HDR stainless steel. It's about three and a quarter inches on this guy. You've got a black washed finish. Pretty good edge geometry or, and blade geometry overall though. It's not too thick. You got a high flat grind and a really nicely finished edge and those partial serrations as well for those folks out there who, who still are looking for that sort of thing. You've got a GFN handle, liner lock, assisted opening like I mentioned, and a reversible pocket clip, almost fully deep carry. It's actually a four position pocket clip. You can carry this tip up or tip down. So you've got those options on either side, left or right. Then you hit that flipper, the speed safe takes over and you're ready to go. Overall, it's kind of not an unexpected design from them, but it's just another solid entry, I think, into Kershaw's very budget-oriented utility knives out there. There's not a lot of folks, honestly, playing around at the, uh, the around $30 level, putting stuff out like Kershaw still does at this type of quality level, so A+. All right, last but not least from Kershaw this week is the Project Atom Arise, which is a synthetic bladed tool here. It's designed to kind of mimic the look of a boot knife. Uh, no sheath, however. This is, if you want to carry this in your boot, you're just going to have to slip it in there. Uh, you do have a uh, kind of a pointy tip, but no sharp edges here. So this would be honestly a pretty decent letter opener as well. And in terms of the handle itself, you've got these bolt-in uh, bolts here, bolt-in bolts, that makes sense, uh, that are uh, permanently affixed to the knife itself. From, uh, from what we understand, from what Kershaw told us, the handle itself is actually molded around these bars. Even though you've got that Torx head look on, then, on there, you're not going to actually be able to remove that, um, which, is, which is good on an otherwise all synthetic knife. You kind of want there to be something you can detect. At least we do up out here at the knife center. So you've also got a nice split ring there at the back. I'm not sure why you would want to carry it on your keychain quite like that. I don't know, maybe it would look good like hung up for like your shed keys on the, on the wall. That would be kind of cool, I guess. Um, Tom, well, we just sold one to Thomas. There we go. Um, and it's not that, that heavy of a lift either. I don't know if I mentioned the price earlier, just 13 bucks on these guys. All right, next up, we've got uh, a much more premium tactical offering, the Tour Knives Anaconda, which comes in about 275. These are US made and like their jank shank, you've got a fairly thick blade stock here. Um, again, not a, uh, not a slicing phenom, but a don't mess with me style of knife. Blade steel is S35VN, about three and three quarters. If so you got a good amount of reach, and despite the thickness on the stock there, you've got a fairly narrow profile. So you still could do some kind of detailed cuts, uh, just not longer slices with the kind of efficiency you might get from a thinner blade. But it's certainly going to stand up to a good bit of abuse for sure. Handles are G10. You've got contouring and scalloping. You've got kind of the best of both worlds going on. So you've got a comfortable feel in the hand. It doesn't, it's not so sharp that it's gonna bite you when you're pressing down, but you do have that extra traction. Sheath is a Flextech Kydex sheath. Holds in there quite nicely and you've got kind of the look of leather on the outside. Uh, no belt attachment hardware or, or any other type of hardware included in the box, but you can get a tech lock or an ulti clip if you want to carry this on the belt or in the pocket respectively. At least those are pretty cheap additions at that point. But one of the things I really appreciate about these Tor knives and this design in particular is kind of the precision, the attention to detail you get. One of the things is a very, very thin edge. So you've got as little as possible getting in the way right behind the edge until you get up to the, uh, the spine of the knife. And also you see it in the handle scales as well. 
Now everything, all the steel all the way around has a nice chamfer and the G10 meets up to the steel on the scale or, or to the steel on the blade itself right where that chamfer ends. It matches up perfectly all the way around, which is, is pretty hard to do, honestly, on a bolt-on knife. It requires a very fine-tuned build process and some attention to detail that you don't always get from you know the overseas companies and that sort of thing. Really, really nicely done. We've got another pretty comfortable folder this week. This is the Best Tech Arctic, which comes in at $52. And for that, you're getting a D2 blade, about three and a half inches with this nice, uh, eh, almost a trailing point, but you've got that big, long, straight clip point essentially there. G10 handles, and this is where the comfort comes in. Overall, the construction is fairly thick. This is not a thin blade. And the contouring on the G10 itself is very comfortable, nice and rounded. It really does fill up the hand quite nicely. You do feel the uh, the holes here drilled into the side. If you're really squeezing down, it does give you a spot to index with your fingers, but just in a standard push through, I'm not quite sure. Let me see which one. And I think the, the Becker's still a little better. I'll, I'll give it that, especially if you move the pocket clip around. But this is this is right there behind it. Uh, and you're also going to be getting with this, it is more expensive than that Becker, but you are going to be getting D2 steel and ball bearings for those of you out there who like the type of action you're going to get from that. Deep carry pocket clip, very nicely put together. On top of that, you've got color options. This is the gray with black stonewashed blade, but there's some greens, satin blades, half and half satin stonewashed as well. Um, just some other good options to take a look at. Another $52 D2 Best Tech Flipper this week is the new Penguin Knife. Similar overall dimensions to the Arctic, uh, but you get a little bit more edge, it looks like here. We're about 3.6 inches D2 with this kind of hybrid blade shape. It's a little bit Warncliffe, uh, or mod probably more of a modified Warncliffe, thanks to the, uh, the amount of belly you've got going on there. Overall, the lines on the spine of that knife flow really nicely into the handle. Has kind of some, some Voxy vibes a little bit going on. I like that. G10, two-tone. You've got green with a black G10 bolster. Other colors are available too. Liner lock, ball bearings, flipper, deep carry pocket clip. All the greatest hits in the $50 D2 uh, flipper range. I do like the angle of the blade to the handle, especially if you're going to be pushing through some longer cuts. You've got uh, this kind of held at just the right spot that makes it easy as you push through those longer cuts. And you get a little bit of clearance if you're doing something on the surface like scoring, maybe even doing a little bit of food prep with it. Should work really nicely. Next up, we've got a fancier, more expensive Best Tech coming in uh, just under 300. This is the Togata. And materials get a bump up. You've got titanium and M390 coming in uh, about three and three quarters of an inch long. Also, I need to check uh, check our site to see if uh, if it has this information. But this one here is labeled 46 out of 60. So I think these are pretty limited as well. Although there are a few different handle variations out there to pick in this uh, this current release. This one has micarta inlays on both sides, just a natural micarta with kind of a rag finish. It feels nice and soft to the touch, and it's going to kind of go a long way to warming up the feel of otherwise what could be a sterile feeling titanium frame. And because these are inlays and not full scales, I'm going to go ahead and call this a frame lock. Uh, not a titanium frame lock a flipper in this case, but the thumb stud action itself with the ball bearings in this pivot are really satisfying. It's really nice to, to flick that Tonto blade out over and over. So I'm going to do it again. Flick. Yeah, quite nice. You've even got a little bit of that drop shut action, which I know some folks out there really appreciate. So check those guys out, and especially if they're limited, don't wait. All right, next up, we've got the Cuff V4 from Leong Ma Designs. And I'm really gratified to see this, honestly, because the V3s came out not too long ago, and they had a three inch blade, and I thought it's kind of a kitchen utility folder, which is what Cuff stands for. I didn't, uh, I wasn't really too keen on the, on the length. I thought we needed some more. I need not have fretted. Here it is. We've got a full four and a quarter inch blade here of LMAX steel, broad modified sheep's foot shape, full flat grind. This is like, this is the pocket Santoku that, uh, that you might want to hang on to and use for more than just food prep stuff. I gotta say, you do have some of that knuckle clearance there. So you do the cutting board stuff even better than that best tech. 
yeah, you can do a little bit of the rocking stuff, but what I've really found this style and, uh, and kind of angle of the blade to handle ratio works well at is on long pull cuts and slices. It has just a really nice feel on that type of cut. Prices on these start at about 338 for G10 versions with titanium on the back and about 389 for this carbon fiber version. And kind of the, the piece de resistance with these, the thing that makes them stand out even apart from the shape, is the backspacer and the front part of the handle are all a single piece. You don't have a separate spacer and a separate scale. You get kind of this hybrid monoblock construction essentially, and it mates up really nicely onto the titanium on the back. With that single seam there, it itself is finished very nicely. You can barely even feel it, but eliminating even a, another spot there on the front goes a long way to having, for a nice thin handle in this case, a pretty comfortable handle. Again, Talking about a different type of comfort than like on the Becker that we were talking about before or that earlier Best Tech, but just a very accommodating slim handled knife. So you've got plenty there to work with for heavier utility jobs beyond just the food prep stuff and easy to carry as well thanks to that thinness. So since we're talking, uh, we're into some slightly fancier stuff here, uh, got a new shipment from Meat and Boss lately um, with a bunch of new handle scale options for some Spyderco models, Para 3, Para 2, and Shaman, I believe. Uh, this particular one is a new set of titanium stales, scales for the Para 3, comes in about 139 right now, but has a really slick look going on. Almost as much as, uh, as the base knife in that case as well, but with the titanium construction and the, uh, the aftermarket kind of customizations going on, certainly not unheard of as a, as a sort of asking price for this sort of thing. And they are all really well done. We'll make sure to leave a link to the, uh, the full selection of new scales we got in now. All right, we've also got a new color variant of the Giant Mouse Ace Clyde. Uh, this guy coming in at 175 right now. And with that, you've got micarta handle scales with a brass backspacer and thumb stud and kind of that uh, that brass and green or yellow and green color combination I always think looks really nicely and it looks really classy in this particular case as well. Blade length, you've got a trailing point M390 blade coming in just under that three inch mark. Nice upswept slicing profile going on. And this is Italian made and you've got the crown spine to prove it. Not that other folks can't do a crown spine, but you know, the Italians love to do it and they do it very well. So you've got a lot of comfort built in there, whether you're choking up with your thumb or your index finger. Pocket clip here is almost completely deep carry. You've got the folded over wire clip, so it looks nice and classy. And you've got an inset liner lock in there as well, which is nice to see, especially on a material like Micarta, which can be a little bit trickier to do. Some of those fine detailed machined cuts pulls it off really nicely with this particular knife. All right, we've also got some new mid techs from Jonathan McNeese. These are the Performance Machined Mac 2s. Uh, they come in at 465, and everything on here is put together very, very premium. And you've got a three inch blade, 20 CV steel with a nice stone washed finish, and you've got a standard titanium handle, anodized a few different colors. This is the blue one right here. Feels really solid, feels very nicely put together. You've got a single position pocket clip there and ball bearings in the pivot. And if you're the kind of person who kind of wishes the small Sabenza had ball bearings in the pivot, this could definitely be, be worth a look. And it's also kind of like some, uh, some old school titanium frame locks. Make sure you keep your, uh, your fingers off the lock bar on this guy or it can be a little difficult to open, but otherwise got a really nice flick going on. It's also a very compact design for a three inch blade. The handle itself is only about three and five eighths. So there's not a lot of extra space lost due to the folding mechanism. You can see the pivot itself is very close there to the tip. And when it's closed up, you don't have a lot of extra space there behind it. Really went a long way to maximizing the amount of blade you could fit in this handle, or maybe they reverse engineered it. Maybe they shot for that three inch blade length and tried to figure out how small they could get the handle at the same time. In either case, for a three inch premium folder that doesn't take up a ton of space and feels very premium too, check those guys out. All right, last but not least, we've got a couple Ontarios, three Ontarios actually. The first two are kind of revamps uh, or line extensions of some of their real popular knives up to this point. The first being the TAC-2. This new version comes with a stabilized laminated hardwood handle 
and a 1075 carbon steel blade comes in about 90 bucks. Still made in the USA and still just as solid feeling as ever, even without the micarta handles. That blade itself is about 4.2 inches. You've got that classic broad corded drop point shape with a full flat grind. Starts with about 3 sixteenths of an inch steel. So it's just overall a really solidly put together proposition for heavier outdoor uses typically. That's where I really see this knife usually shining. You do have a bit of a blade coating on there. It's not a smooth coating, but it's not a rough like powder coat either. It's kind of a, a matte texture almost going on there. Kind of a maybe a little bit of a best of both worlds type of scenario. And of course, being 1075, you're going to want some rust protection as well. Sheath is a nice classic option here. It's not a, a tactical looking option. You've got black leather with a retention strap here to wrap around. Just a really nice presenting package, even though you've got kind of like that outdoor tactical survival pedigree, you've got a classy looking package to put on your belt. The second uh, kind of new revamp is new versions or a new version of their Blackbird. This is the ML5 Blackbird comes in about 125. Now it's not so much the steel that gets an upgrade here. We're dealing with 420 HC, but the handle materials are what's new. And you may have seen this uh, on a couple of new hunting knives that we uh, that we introduced when we interviewed Ontario earlier this year. Those are also in now, so we'll leave a link to those as well. But I was just showing you uh, since you've seen those, I'm showing you this material on the new knives. But it's kind of a rag micarta here, or at least it looks like what I think of when I think of an old school rag micarta, where the the fabrics in there are a little more randomized. It's it's less like solid sheets or very consistent sheets. So you get a nice, slightly more chaotic look, almost a camouflaged look with the particular colors they're using on this guy. Um, but it's just something new, something a little bit different. So I always like to see that. As far as the rest of the specs, I told you the steel were at five inches and the handle flat scaled, but fairly comfortable. You've got a nice finger guard here at the front and a little bit of a beak at the back. I've always thought of this as kind of the, like the modernized tactical Kephart knife in a way. Certainly a great survival knife, outdoor use tool as well. Just a very accommodating shape and a very versatile using blade shape as well. As far as the sheath on this guy, same thing going on essentially as that tack, black leather with the retention strap. Last but not least, we've got another new Ontario with kind of that similar handle, handle material. This is the new hiking fixed blade, simply called, coming in about $70. 3.4 inch blade, 420 HC again, nice drop point shape. And I think it really, something about it flows into the handle really nicely here too. Actually, let me hold up. Uh, it's not quite the same style of vibes as that best tech, but both of them have a little bit of a nice flow going on. You've got a little bit more of an angular treatment to, uh, to the Ontario in this case though. As far as who this is going to be useful for, certainly anyone doing those types of outdoor tasks, but I think for folks that tend to have slightly smaller hands, at least smaller hands than I usually do, um, the feel for me, it's a little bit cramped. I'm kind of kicked down a little bit. It's not altogether bad, but it's not altogether good either. Um, again, this knife just isn't made for me in that case. Certainly has a very streamlined shape. I like, uh, you do have a little bit of a finger guard here, but it's not super aggressive. So it's a good, again, again, kind of one of those good best of both worlds types of scenarios because you get a little bit of protection, but you can still get up and choke up right behind the edge, get some of that fine control going for your carving needs. Sheath on here, almost the same. Brown leather in this case, but similar style. You've got that uh, retention strap and just a nice classy look. All right, folks, that's all the time I've got for today. Make sure to let me know your favorites and what you thought of these knives down below. And as always, there are links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com if you want to get your hands on one. Make sure you check out our Knife Rewards program as well, because if you're going to spend some money on one of these knives today, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.